Hi everyone and thanks for watching my online lesson on direct and inverse proportion. So this topic now appears on foundation tier as well as higher. These are the basics of direct and inverse proportion that you need to know. If you're sitting higher tier, you'll need to be more confident with some more complicated problems than the ones I'm going to go through here. So this question says D is directly proportional to the square of T. So this means that as D gets bigger, then T squared will get bigger. And converse to that, if D gets smaller, then the square of T will get smaller as well. So we write this first using a symbol to mean they are in proportion to each other. So I write D and the symbol looks like this. You might hear teachers calling it a fish symbol because it kind of looks like a fish. Um, and that's proportional to the square of T, so T squared. So that's my first sentence that I'm going to write. Now, if D gets bigger, T squared gets bigger, but they're in proportion so that there's some number linking them as well. There's some constant that multiplies by T squared to give me the value of D. So I'm going to write this as D equals some constant, and we call that K, multiplied by T squared. So I'm starting to get a formula now, but I need to work out what this constant is. What is this value of K? And if you look in the question, they've given me a little clue. They've said, when D is 80, T is 4. So I've got this clue here to help me find what K is. So if I substitute these numbers in to what formula I've got so far, 80, that's the value of D, equals K multiplied by T, which is 4 squared. So let's simplify this a little bit more because I know that 4 squared is 16. So what number times by 16 gives me 80? So K must be 80 divided by 16, which is 5. So I found my value of K. I can now improve on this formula that I had here because I now know K is 5. So my formula is D equals... 5, and I can write 5 times t squared, or I can just write 5t squared. So that's my answer, that's my formula connecting d and t together. So d equals 5t squared. Now this question has a part b and c. They're now wanting me to use that formula I've just found in part a to work out some other values of d and t. So the first part says work out the value of d when t is 7. So I've just got to substitute 7 into this formula. So d equals 5 times 7 squared. So 7 squared is 49. And 5 times 49 is 245. So when T is 7, D is 245. The second one is slightly harder. So it says work out the positive value of T when D is 45. So I'm going to substitute in again. This time they're telling me D is 45. Now I've got to work out what t is, so I've just got like an equation to solve. So I'm going to divide by 5 first on both sides. So this gives me 9 equals t squared. So t must be the square root of 9, which is 3. The reason they've said work out the positive value of t instead of just work out the value of t is because we know that minus 3 times minus 3 is also 9. So minus 3 is the square root of 9 as well. But they've asked for the positive value, so the answer is 3. So that last question was a direct proportion question. And this one here is an inverse proportion. And you need to know how to tackle both types. It's also worth noting the last question was split up into parts. It had part A, B and C. And sometimes the questions can just be sort of do it all in one go like this one is here. 
So this says P is inversely proportional to M. So this time, as P gets bigger, M is going to get smaller. And as P gets smaller, M is going to get bigger. So I can't write that P is proportional to M. I need to write P is proportional to 1 over M. This way, because I wrote it as a denominator of a fraction, as M gets bigger, then P will get smaller. And as M gets smaller, P will get bigger. So this is my inverse proportion formula. So as before, there's going to be some constant connecting these together. So I'm going to write P equals, and I could write K multiplied by 1 over M. But a simpler way of doing this is to have the K on the top of the fraction, which means the same thing. So this is my formula. But as before, I need to find out what this constant actually is. What is this value of K? And they've given me a clue. They've said that when P is 48, M is 9. So I can substitute this in and find the value of K. So P is 48 and M is 9. So to find my value of K here, I'm going to do 48 multiplied by 9 which is 432. So that's my value of k, which means I can improve this formula that I had up here. So p is 432 over m. So that's the formula that connects p and m. But the question is actually asking, calculate the value of p when m is 12. So I'm going to substitute m is 12 into my formula. So p equals... 432 divided by 12, and that's just 36. So that's my answer. Here's two questions for you to try. So remember, the first one is direct proportion. So we're going to say M is directly proportional, so your symbol, to L cubed this time. And in this one, the inverse proportional one, it's going to be y is, is proportional to your symbol 1 over x squared. I've deliberately not shied away here. I've gone for fairly complicated questions. I've not picked some really easy ones. We need to make sure that you're secure on doing this. If you pause the video, you can unpause when you're ready to see the full solutions. Okay, so here are my solutions. So the first one, it's M is proportional to L cubed this time. So when I substitute in that M is 160 and L is 2, 2 cubed is 8, which means my constant this time is 20. So this is the formula you should get. And then they're asking me, find the value of M when L is 3. So I do 20 multiplied by 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. So 27 times 20 is 540. This question here was like the first example we did, but this time it wasn't broken up into A, B and C sections. It was just do it all in one go. And then your second question was a really tricky one. It's Y is inversely proportional to X squared. So this is how I set it up to begin with. And then I put in my value of k, and I need to find what k is. And they've even given me a decimal here. When y is 2.5, x is 24. So I substitute that in. So k is 2.5 times 24 squared, and that's 1,440. It's worth noting here, if they were asking you to do calculations like this one especially, it would definitely be on a calculator paper, so don't worry. Now, this one was split into three parts, so part two on this is find the value of y when x is 20. So just substituting in 20 to the bottom, so 20 squared, um, and do that division, that's 3.6. And then this second bit here, it says find a value of x when y is 1.6. And the reason for this is when I substitute this in here, I get that x squared is 
1440 divided by 1 1.6 which is 900 and like that first example we did the square root of 900 has two values so you could have wrote plus 30 or minus 30 if you've just put plus 30 that's fine because they're just saying find a value so i went for plus 30 because that's probably the easier one thank you for watching